every now and then I try to make a Q&A video because I get so many questions in the comments that well they're nice if they're all bundled together and there are some actually some really interesting questions in there. And today is the day, my second ever Q&A video. Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. So today is a Q&A video with a lot of interesting questions. And the first question is from my friend Michaela and he asks, do you think connecting to a USB 3.0 can upgrade a little bit the results of this card? Now I can see where this question is coming from. USB has of course a lot more bandwidth and so there's a lot less effort to transfer the audio data from point A to point B. So I did a little test. Now I did the testing with the Audio Crest Dragonfly Red as featured in a couple of videos ago. This device is USB 2.0 uh, but it will function in any USB port. I tested the USB 2.0, 3.0 and a USB-C port. Now, As you can see in the results here, there's uh, no real difference and almost everything is well within the margin of error. Except for the stereo crosstalk which is very interesting. But before we all change to USB 3.0 for our audio devices, Please keep in mind that the wiring inside the test bench may be the cause of this. I think that USB 3.0 is, well, a lot better shielded and, well, it may result in less stereo crosstalk, but I'm not really sure. So, Michaela, I will definitely look into this a bit more and I'll try to get back to this, well, somewhere in the future. Really good question. Thank you, Michaela. Now the second question comes from a guy or girl named Rayla exclamation mark. Can you make review USB sound cards from Kibi Dumai 5.1? Now this sound card uses the CM8738. Now I've never heard of this brand, uh, but there are a lot of brands out there in China that will have similar devices. If you look up some sound cards, you will see that the same card comes along with different names and slightly different prices. And at first the, the sound card that I found was this one, which is just 79 cents. So I doubt that this is the one that you want to have a review about. Also, I don't know what's inside. So then I looked a bit further and then I found this one. And this one does have the C-Media chip in there. And this is what the data sheet looks like for that C-Media chip. The first thing that strikes me is that it's PCI based, which also explains the AS Media chip on the sound card itself. Now this AS Media chip is just a PCI to PCI Express Bridge chip. The functionalities of this card are ancient and well, they're not that good. I mean, Sound Blaster Pro compatible, support for EAX, and it supports PCTEL HSP56 which is something for ye olde modems. The only thing that I could remotely say is cool is the HRTF or the hat related transfer function to make sound look or hear 3D-ish. Well, sound never looks. <laughs> it sounds 3D-ish. I'll get back to that a bit later on in the video as well. But I doubt that the algorithm for this HRTF is really good. So huh. in the end, well, this card is just rubbish, rubbish. Don't buy it. And the second question is from Douglas Robinson, and he says, I would like you to do a review about the Sound Blaster AE7. I just got it a week ago to replace my aging Z card. Now the Z was a pretty nice and decent card by itself. So I think that the AE7 would be a, well, an upgrade, but how much I really don't know. And this is a question that I get so many times and I would love to get my hands on an AE7, but they are really expensive. Now, I tried to reach out to Creative, but as usual, their support or lack of it is notorious and especially for the press and tiny channels like mine. There was just no reply. So, if I get my hands on an AE7, it's, I will drop everything else and I will start to do a review about that one. The 
And for the third question, we go over to Verdozi. Can you use a USB microphone as a sound card to improve onboard sound? Now, that's a really good question. Now, I myself use a Yeti Blue, which is the microphone, pop it up, which is the microphone right here. It does have a headphone, headphone output, but I rarely use it. And not that I don't think it's any good, I just don't know. So great idea for another video. Thank you for that. So the next question is by someone named Roligon, and he asked me, what are some of your favorite songs to test audio hardware? Uh, as everyone, I have several playlists on Spotify, but there's just one uh, playlist that I always use to test hardware. Either it's headphones, headsets, external sound cards, internal sound cards, whatever. This is the standard list. And why do I use this standard list? Well, it's better to compare or easier to compare uh, different devices if you already know these songs. Now, of course, you have the copyright things, so I cannot let you hear them. Um, but let's go over them one by one and you can look them up yourself. Now, first up, it's uh, Limit to Your Love by James Blake. Now, this is the start of all my listening sessions and I use this song because it has that pumping bass, uh, where is it, uh, 55 seconds, which will go deep, deeper, deep, deeper. Now, this bass, if the hardware, the sound card headset, whatever, is of poor quality, it will not produce those basses or will sound garbled or just reproduced incorrectly. Now, this is where it started with the my uh, hate, well, my dislike for the Astro A40 because it just couldn't produce those basses. Next up is Unfinished Sympathy by Massive Attack, and this also starts with a very deep bass right at the beginning of the song. Uh, the bass note is at four seconds, and it's really deep. It starts uh, deep, but then it goes even deeper. Now, if I cannot hear that last, that deepest bass note with enough volume, uh, I know that the product isn't that good. Next up is Chen Chen by the Buena Vista Social Club, which has a great uh, soundstage and I can use it to pinpoint each instrument. Now, close your eyes uh, while you're listening to this song and can you hear all the different instruments? Can you hear the guitar? Uh, can you hear the piano? Can you hear the percussion and uh, the men singing? At about 2 minutes and 38 seconds, there will be a trumpet which will start playing. Now, if you can hear this instrument separately from the, all the other instruments, you know you've got some good components there. Next up is Take 5 by the Dave Brubeck Quartet. Now, this is for me one of the best recordings ever made. The soundstage is phenomenal. Uh, the drums, uh, the percussion, everything is separated from each other. Um, you can hear the trumpet in the center and the piano to the side and everything is well separated. Now, if you have a headphone or headset, which is of a bit less, lesser quality, the trumpet will sound uh, shrill, sharp and really unpleasant. So again, if you can hear the trumpet with ease and well, with everything in there, you know, you've got a great headset. Next up is Sympathy for the Devil by the Rolling Stones. Now, this song is rather hard for sound cards to play because there's a lot going on. It's sort of overwhelming for a lot of sound cards and headphones alike. I use headphones and headsets side by side. So um, it's a really demanding song, especially at the ending when there is a lot of stuff going on. Now, if you have a sound card or headphone that's of lesser quality, it will just get garbled and will it will be just, just a spray of sound.
Next is Assess by Niels Fram. Now this song will start off really quiet, even so quiet that in better sound cards you can actually hear Niels sitting down, or well at least moving. Uh, as the sound, sorry, as the song progresses, it, it will get louder and louder, and a lot of sound cards tend to make a big mess of, especially at the ending, because there's a lot going on. It will just spew out sound with yeah, too much going on. The more expensive headsets, um, like the Biodynamic DT990 Pro that I have and the Burson Audio, those two combined will make this song, well, sound amazing. Next up is The Mother We Share by Churches, which is just a song that I usually use for the beginning. At the beginning you will hear the different sounds coming from each ear. Now if you have a headphone with a lot of stereo crosstalk, it's bound to bleed over from one ear to the other ear. A great song to just to test that. And next up is a complete album that I use for, well, testing um, equipment. Um, it's Unplugged by Eric Clapton. Now, on the album itself, the first track is a song called Sign. It's the start song. And at 2 minutes and 26 seconds, there is what I at least think is some feedback from the microphones. It's a really high frequency note all the way in the background, and it's very hard to hear. Now only headsets and sound cards that are of better quality will be able to reproduce this and place it well in the background. Now I know that you will start listening for this tone, this frequency, and once you've heard it, it will not be unheard. And then it's just my personal favorite. It's not something that's well recorded. Well, it is well recorded, but it's not well that recorded. Um, it isn't particularly hard for headphones or our sound cards to reproduce. It's just my favorite. And I've been listening to this one since 1991. So 31 years, yes, I'm getting old. And it's Fading Lights by Genesis. Now I know this song well, by heart. I listened to it, to it so many times that I know each timing, I know each instrument, I know each everything about this song. So if there's anything wrong with timing or whatever, I can identify it. And last, but definitely not least, it's the song called Cornfield Chase by Hans Zimmer. Now, this is a short song used in the movie Interstellar. Definitely take a look at that movie because it's great. But besides that, this short song, if you have some excellent equipment, um, this song is just musical piece. I think that's a better word. It will sound amazing as if you were in the church where it was recorded itself. It's, I believe it's Temple Church in London. At the 1 minute and 23 seconds, the lower registers will open up and the song will, or music piece, will sound like pure magic. I mean, it's like, well, magic. It, it, it always gives me goosebumps. And then at 1 minute 55, near, almost near the end of the song, is where the most demanding part of this music piece is, at least for sound cards and headsets. Nearly everything that I listen to will just spew out sound like, well... <laughs> Uh, well, let's just say it's really hard to keep your composure when reaching a climax. So, Rolicon, I hope that this will give you a bit better idea of what songs I listen to during my listening sessions. Next up is a question by Tronotized, and he asked me, I think it would be interesting to hear your thoughts on Dolby Atmos and spatial audio in general. I love the idea of the theory in it, but in practice, spatial audio always sounds odd and muffled to me. 
Now that's a good question, a really good question indeed. Now, to me, everything that has a spatial 3D or environmental sound or whatever, well, it just doesn't work. It's just uh, companies trying to add a lot of reverb and echoes to it to make it sound 3D-ish, but you can never pinpoint the exact location where the audio is coming from. And that to me is 3D sound. Now, the main advantage of Dolby Atmos is that the system actually knows where in your room all speakers are placed. So it can add as much reverb, delay, echoes, whatever, uh, just to give you the, uh, your, for you to be able to pinpoint each audio location. And so it's a lot more accurate. So Dolby Atmos, especially in cinemas, is a really good thing. But you also have Windows, what is it, Windows Sonic and of course Windows Atmos um, for your headset. Now, this is where the problem comes. You only have two speakers. So although Atmos does have the information to be able to, to pinpoint all the sound sources, when you just have two headphones, or sorry, two speakers, it's still really hard to, well, accurately place all instruments or sound sources. Now you have something called HRTF, as I said before, or head related transfer function, which translates all the sources to a 2D image by adding delays, echoes, reverbs, and everything else. So the Dolby, Dolby Atmos does work a bit better because it has that information. All other systems are just rubbish because you cannot, well, make something 3D-ish if you do not have the information for it to place the audio source. But then we come to the disadvantage of HRTF and that's that the ear of every single person is different from, well, everybody else. So what will sound amazing to me will sound, what did you say, odd and muffled. So I can understand what you're saying. Um, in my experience, it always sounds odd and muffled. And the last question for the Q&A for today, hey, that rhymes, um, is from Lucas. And he asked me, can you easily switch between speakers and earphones by using a hotkey? Well, this is an extremely good question because that's a problem that I have. Uh, attached to my main system, there are probably, well, four to five, maybe even six sound sources um, for me to switch. And I always have to go to the desktop and switch it from there. So it would be nice if you had a, well, a, a shortcut or a, what did you, a, a hotkey. Sadly, Windows does not have one, but I found that there's a tiny little program called, uh, what is it, Audio Switcher, which may be interesting to you. Now, I haven't tested it myself. I haven't used it. I don't know who makes it. I don't know if it's uh, spam or spyware or whatever. So use it at your own risk, always do. Um, but it may be something that you would need. And that's it, my second ever q and I hope you enjoyed viewing this episode. I at least enjoyed making it because these questions were really good. Now, I hope to make another Q&A in the future. So if you have any questions, uh, place them in the comments. Um, I will take them in the next Q&A. Maybe not, but that's something else. Um, for me, uh, the next review uh, video will be a regular review, so there's nothing to worry about. It won't be all Q&As. Until then, I'd like to see you in the next video. See you then. Bye-bye.